atmosphere is good. We started off in prayer. So welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'm Stephanie Garcia. I'm a counselor here at the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'm actually going to be taking over the children's ministry, and we're going to have our first one uh, September 2nd. That's next Saturday. My sister in Christ, whom I love dearly, is off doing the Lord's work. And so I'm going, I'm the pinch hitter. My dad, I'm really close to my dad. He's watched a lot of baseball and football. So I'm the backup quarterback, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Brady was the backup quarterback at one time, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. My main focus there is, of course, to let the Holy Spirit lead in everything. That's what ministry is, right? This is why I'm here. The Lord did a mighty work in my life, just uprooting all kinds of things. The main focus in my life was healing. Lots of years of trauma through childhood, bringing it over in every relationship. And the Lord did a mighty work. I wish I could say it was by accident, but it wasn't. And he was training me all my life, training me, training me, everything that I've been through to be able to minister to people. I know what you're going through. I know the feelings. I know the lies. I know the emotional things attached to it. And then the Lord showed me a way, he showed me a way. And so I use that and I follow him. I went through a point in my life where I was trying to be like other people. I seen how they do it, how they, it just wasn't working. And I'd sit with the Lord, you know, he's my love and my first love. This isn't working, Lord. You brought me here. You've given me this heart. I see people through your eyes. I've, I can feel what they feel. What, what, what good is it if I don't know how to do it? I don't want to hide my talents. I don't want to be that lazy servant that just hides the talents. I want to be used. How do I do it? And I begin to follow him. And all through my life, he was teaching me obedience. Lots of things that I've went through. There's a point in my life where I was going to go to Bible school to be a preacher. But everywhere that I was at, they were saying, women can't be preachers. They can't do this. They can't do that. And I was always boggled down by fear and intimidation. And, and it's the word of God. So I, it can't be right, you know. But then the Lord would bring people alongside of me to help me, you know. I call them the Simons in my life. So our Lord Jesus, right, he, he went through a lot. He went through a traumatic experience on our behalf, right? Yeah. The Bible says he was beaten beyond recognition, right? right? Yeah. He came to a point where he's carrying his cross and he couldn't carry it anymore, right? He couldn't carry it anymore. The Romans compelled Simon the Serene, right, to help him carry his cross. And this has just been my ministry. Lord, I want to be Simon. I want to be the Barnabases, the ones that believe in people when no one does. Those ones that are timid and scared and they need someone to come along them. I will fight for you and with you. Let's do it. I know every lie. Let's go. I'm coming in agreement with you. You need help. I need help. Let's go. The Lord did it for me. He showed me how to do it for others. And here I go. Here we are. So with the children's deliverance, I have five children, right? Two adult daughters and then three youngsters. So the Lord has just taught me one thing. If I can put it all in a nutshell, it's to always point to Jesus. When they're coming to me for advice, when they're doing this, let them talk, let them get it through and always point to him and ask for that moment to point out, hey, what did we do here? This is what this is. This is what that is. And then let the, door, the Lord do the convicting. And either they receive it or they don't. But either way, the Lord always has them and he always brings them back. So excited about that time. Excited to see more people coming in. Thank you, Lord. It's an answer to prayer. We pray over these grounds all the time. Every person that has come in this place is an answer to prayer. And we're so grateful for all of you for being here and for listening to Brother Mike as soon as he comes. But that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to invite you out to Children's Deliverance this Saturday, September 2nd. Okay? Praise God. What time? Great question. Kelly, what time? Uh, we start at 10. <laughs> there you go. 10, 10 to 10 12. Hi. Yeah, I started to leave the house and then uh, I got sick. And uh, halfway on Grand there, I had to pull over at Denny's. Ooh. Thank God for Denny's. <laughs> Love that restaurant. He might hand these out for me. There you go. Thank you. All right.
Um, Stephanie already talked. Yeah, how'd that go? Excellent. Okay. Good. Thank you. Erica was doing our children's deliverance, but she's taking a break. So Stephanie filled in since she's already been doing that in her church. I thought, well, that'd be, that's a great transition. No problemo. Uh, yesterday was the weirdest day uh, I've ever had in the ministry, with the exception of uh, when I used to be in the prison ministry. I saw weird stuff happen all the time there. And I was in the jail ministry for a couple years down here in Maricopa County. And uh, some bizarre stuff happened all the time. So, but since I left that ministry, yesterday was the weirdest day I've ever had in the ministry. <laughs> I got here and there was a FedEx box on my desk. Somebody had sent me a book they wrote and it was about two inches thick. I mean, this person had put an enormous amount of time in it. I didn't have time to read it, obviously, but I skimmed through it. And it was a very, very unusual book. Never seen anything quite like it. And he put a donation check in there for some reason. And so I haven't called the guy yet. And I thought, wow, that's weird. But I got to get ready for the service. <laughs> so uh, before I got here, Kelly calls and said somebody was here who's off their meds, acting bizarre. And uh, that ties into what we talked about a few months ago that uh, in your ministry, you don't ever tell anybody to go off their medications because uh, that could blow up in our face like you wouldn't believe, not to mention the legality of it. And um, so what we do is, if the person's cooperating and they're going through deliverance, we, we have them go to their doctor and ask them to wean them off the medication, reduce it slowly. You can't just go cold turkey. Uh, and I remember I handed that sheet out that had all those medications that time we went over it. Was it six months ago or something like that? So these, these drugs they're on, lithium and all that stuff, these are powerful drugs and the body gets addicted to it. And if you just cut it, you're going to have what we had last night. Somebody who's out of touch, they can't think straight, their behavior's bizarre, and uh, they're kind of going nuts, so to speak. So Rick came over and bailed us out on it. And uh, the guy got some deliverance, but uh, his, he hadn't been taking his meds. So when you're working with SMIs, uh, they don't, they don't get delivered like everybody else does. You know, they don't uh, do well with regular deliverance. It's a long process. They don't do well with soul healing and removing wounds. That's the, everything is much tougher with them. And there's no quick fixes with those types of people. They're, they're really sick. Sick, sick, sick. So if, they, if we can't get them to cooperate, we, we lose them. They usually get mad at us and then they disappear. They don't show up anymore. I hope that doesn't happen with him. But anyway, that's what that was all about. And then uh, after the service, there was some guy came here who thought we were all crazy because he didn't think Christians could have demons. And uh, he started rebuking everybody and yelling at everybody. I guess um, it was out in the hall down there. I thought it was the same guy, but when I got down there, I thought, well, this isn't the guy they were talking about earlier. And uh, I created this handout for you, and the guy was asking me to show him in the Bible where a Christian could have a demon in their flesh. And I said, well, I can't do that because it's not in there. See, I told you, you guys are crazy and nuts. And I said, well, uh, I can't talk to this guy anymore. I'm mentally and physically exhausted. I just got out of a three-hour service. I got to get out of this quickly. So I said to him, you, would you show me a scripture that shows that Christians cannot have demons? 
Well, his eyes got wide and saucers, and whoa, there he goes. And now he went into a tirade like that, and I was able to get out of it. So I just kind of backed up and watched him rant around and tell us we were going to hell and everything else. <clears throat> so here's the bottom line. For whatever reason, God did not put that in the New Testament. I don't know why it's not in there, but it doesn't say Christians can or can't have demons. It's not in there. Hey, Lori, would you get me a bottle of water for a minute? Sure. Sorry about it. No I forgot my drink. Uh, I, I was busy at Denny's. <laughs> it wasn't the Denny's food. Okay. But anyway, after the guy was ranting and raving out there, we had a great uh, prayer for him, didn't we? Thank you for that. That was a fantastic, because I was too tired to do it. Thank you for stepping up and killing that thing. We prayed for that guy. Uh, I'm assuming he was a Baptist. But for some reason, he had gotten extremely angry at us. And, uh, I mean, he was steamed. I was too tired to do anything about it. He <laughs> pooped. That was after his wife got delivered. Whose wife? <laughs> she That's right. Wow. What? His wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. Went to deliverance. Yeah. Was he in the service? He was in the service? Yes. In the same night? Last night? Yes. Last night. Wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> Red, you and Elisa prayed for her and she got... Great. You're kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was that the one with the rainbow or hair or something? Uh, can't remember. Okay. Well, that makes it even more bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he just walked in off the street and started blasting people. He was, he was here? They were both in the service. I didn't see the guy. Yeah, Did you see him? Ask no. Wow. Hard to believe. So anyway, uh, that's amazing. These are the scriptures I found that hint that Christians can have demons. Okay? But it doesn't actually come out and say, bang. Christians cannot have demons. It's not in there. And that's why the guy got so mad at me, because he knew he didn't have a scripture for it. Because there isn't any scripture. Yeah. I thought Mary Magdalene had, it clearly says that he casted seven demons out of her. Not no, but, uh, yeah, but the argument is... Uh, can a born-again Christian have demons? So their theory on it is none of those people were actually born again the way we discuss it back then. They don't feel they were born again. And then the, the people that got delivered, they weren't born-again Christians. They were Jews. They were all Jews. See? So if I would have showed him the Mark 5 and, and so on, he would have said, well, no, those aren't born-again Christians. Those are Jews. Where does it say in the Bible that a born-again Christian can have a demon in their flesh? And so I said to him, I can't show that to you because it's not in there. So he assumed that was, the argument then was his until I asked him that question, and then he didn't have a scripture for anything, nothing. It was just his opinion, and I don't know what happened. I thought the guy was a stranger just walked in off the street. He, saw, he was in the service and saw the service. Mm -hmm. he, he saw the altar call? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. wow. See, more bizarre. So, this is your argument toward it. And then again, there's a caveat there that it doesn't actually come out and say, bang, A, B, C. So, why that is, I don't know. It's, it's none of my business, I guess. Uh, I mentioned that we were trying to find somebody to be the manager of the healing house next door. You know, we have people come from out of state and stay there for free. So they don't, a lot of people can't afford a hotel and everything. So uh, I'm striking out on that. So if God doesn't send me a couple, my question is, should we put a single person in there? And the next question is, male or female? So, you know, 
if you have any thoughts on that or you have any suggestions, you know, I'm all ears because I'm not sure what to do now. It's been, what, three, four months now and no, nobody showed up to take that job. So I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with that place. I want to do something. I, just, I, I don't want to make it a, a rental where it's just making money. I was hoping it could be something used in a ministry to help people, not just uh, make money. I don't know. <clears throat> now, uh, this summer has been incredibly hot. So I said to the Lord a few months ago, hey, um, thank you for remembering the utility bills. Yesterday, I got in the mail from Schwab Charitable. Never heard of them. Um, don't know how they found me. Some uh, donor fund, Bill Hang or somebody, donor advised fund from Silverado, California sent us $10,000. Never heard of them. Don't know anything about them. Never solicited a dime. It just fell in the mailbox. Who are these people? I don't know. Didn't ask for Anything? They might have watched the video and got touched from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't do a video on utility bills, but <laughs> there, <laughs> there it is. It's not specifically stating for utilities, or is it? Is it what? Is it specifically stating no. what? Okay. What nope. Okay. There's uh, stipulations on what we can use the money for. Oh, okay. Uh, Fortunately, there's nothing here about gambling. So <laughs> I got clearance on that. I feel that's an earth. God allowing me to do that. Amazing. We don't get many of those. But it's been super hot this summer, so the bills have been like clicked to here to there. You know, it's costly. And uh, here's another familiar spirit venture. I don't know if you saw this one. I've uh, read dozens of near-death experiences over the years. Anybody else follow those near-death experiences? Nobody. Well, anyway, uh, the demons cook these things up, and then they uh, give these people tunnels and bright lights and love. They have this comforting feeling of a tunnel, and there's a light down there. And uh, here's one that was particularly interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. Here's a doctor, a neuropathologist, went on a, a whitewater rafting trip in Costa Rica and uh, with his wife and son, and then the boat capsized. He couldn't swim very well, so he's, he's drowning, and... Uh, He's thinking in his mind, I'm going to drown, and I have done autopsies on numerous people who've drowned in the past. He has all these thoughts going through his mind while he's underwater. And he sinks to the bottom of the river there, and uh, suddenly he says he had a moment of calm and acceptance, he called it. There was a point when I was drowning, and I knew it. And at the bottom of the river, he started to have hallucinations. He saw a bright light and felt an overwhelming sense of love. He heard a voice reassuring him that his family would be okay, stating that they didn't need him. At that moment, he also knew that his wife and son had already been pulled out of the water and were safe. So then it says uh, the, light, the light vanished after he had a thought of dismissing the experience as a result of hypoxia. The light vanished and he held his breath even more and they finally pulled him out of the water. He had an Apple watch on that kept track of his pulse and uh, the watch showed that there was no heartbeat 
for eight minutes while he was under the water. So he was, he was dead for eight minutes and he had this incredible experience, beautiful light, lots of love, and so on. And then uh, this uh, voice or something told, me, told him that his family wouldn't need him. And now he has uh, changed how he talks to his patients. He teaches them and tells them that nobody needs to fear death now that it's a calm, comforting experience and uh, people should celebrate and embrace it. So you can see here how the demons pick out credible witnesses to manufacture these fake near-death experiences so that when the person you know, goes into the light, boop, they drop off into hell. It's all a scam, a giant scam. A uh, very effective one. Steps to Freedom ADC at gmail.com is the email for Julie's Tuesday night group. I guess she's thinking about canceling it if enough people don't sign up for it. Is that it? Okay, so if you, if you, uh, ladies, want to uh, keep that group going. It's Tuesday nights here at 6 o'clock, 6.30. 6.30 in this room at Tuesday nights. You need to sign up for that or send that email around and tell the whoever wants to do it to sign up. Otherwise, she's not going to have the class. She's going to keep the Zoom class, but not the in-person class, okay? Steps to Freedom, ADC at gmail.com. Tuesday nights at six thirty. All right. <clears throat> you mentioned last time that you wanted uh, legal updates. Is that still true? <laughs> Mixed. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll do this then. There's good news and bad news going on, as you know. A three-judge panel in Alabama. What happened was the state of Alabama passed a law that said um, you cannot do transition surgeries on minors. Um, you cannot transfer a boy to a girl and a girl to a boy if they're a minor. Okay? Well, they got sued. And uh, they won. So it went up to the Alabama Supreme Court. And they said, uh, no, that uh, the state of Alabama legislatively is allowed, is legally allowed to uh, pass a law about transition surgeries for minors. So at least there, uh, something good happened. In South Carolina, they passed a law saying that if a baby in the womb has a heartbeat and it can be detected, um, you cannot abort the child. <coughs> six weeks thereabouts, right? And uh, they got sued and lost. Court of Appeals said, no, nope, they can do that. That is legal. And so in South Carolina, you cannot have an abortion if the baby's heartbeat is viable. I always look at the laws because that's how everybody lives their life. All of us have to live under the law unless you're a politician, then you can circumvent it. But a regular person has to live under the law. Okay, so that's why I keep track of these things because a lot of them related to Christianity and the church and religion. <clears throat> In August 2016, a farmer named Steve Tennis, he was running a uh, Country Mills Farms in East Lansing, Michigan, and he would hold uh, weddings during the summer. 
the place apparently is beautiful. It's got all kinds of flowers and everything. And he would uh, use the weddings as a side business. And uh, LGBTQ people started to come and want a wedding. This guy was Catholic. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't do weddings for LGBTQ. It violates my Catholic faith. He said. Then he got sued by the city of East Lansing. And he lost. And uh, he was uh, excommunicated from being on any, any of his farm, being involved in any other businesses. He sued, and the Court of Appeals, he sued in 2017, and last week he won. They said that the uh, city of East Lansing had violated his rights to practice his religion based on his personal faith, and they didn't have any legal right to tell him whether he could use his property that he owned for whatever weddings that he didn't want to do or did want to do. And then he was free to practice his religious beliefs. So in East Lansing, you're, you're clear. Abortion pills. Uh, the FDA came out with abortion pills in 2000 and they had regulations in 2016 saying, listen, these abortion pills are for this, but be careful and don't use them this way or that way. Their side effects could be this or that and you need to restrict it in terms of what type of person gets it, how old they are, etc. There was some rules they put out with the pills because these are not like vitamins. They're, they're powerful medications, right? Well, then the FDA decided that uh, that's too restrictive and it sounds bad, so they pulled it. And we're giving the pills out to anybody, just shipping them out with no restrictions on it. This was in Texas. Uh, they got sued because the uh, state of Texas had put restrictions on those pills and the FDA took them off. And then the Fifth, C Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals sided with Texas and the FDA lost. So now when you get an abortion pill, they are required to give those previous precautions about the pill for the safety of the consumer. So Texas won, we won, they lost. Let's move over to Israel. As you know, Israel loves Christianity and hates Christianity. Uh, they hate Christianity and have outlawed, like all the other countries, evangelism. So if I go over to Israel and I can knock on the door, hey, would you like to receive Christ? I'm going to get thrown in jail. But there are dozens and dozens of Christian ministries in Israel doing charity work. They have bad pro poverty problems over there because the government spends all their money on the military. So they have all kinds of poverty problems there. Poor people, elderly people with nothing so, this venue of Christians believes that we replaced Jews and Jews are not are nothing now. This group of Christians are messianic and want to help usher in the return of Christ. So they do everything they can to help Israel. And there's dozens of Christian groups over there. And uh, Israel is cr now cracking down on them. They're revoking visas for cler Christian clergy and for these Christian groups. For example, one group over there um, is $25 million a year they spend providing humanitarian services to Jews. They didn't do any proselytizing. They're not allowed to do that over there. It's, like, it's the same in Saudi Arabia, uh, Uzbekistan, all, all those countries, 
Christianity is outlawed. Because if you let somebody hand out a bunch of New Testaments, it's going to destroy their society. Their people are going to split. The government's going to collapse. Nobody wants to be around a New Testament. It's the most dangerous book in the world. So it's outlawed everywhere. Because there's no way to stop it. The New Testament will wipe out the Koran in five minutes. Everybody would rush to the Holy Ghost. And with good reason. So the Jews will not allow it. They don't want any of this Christianity crap in there, but they do want our donations and our money. Now, apparently, uh, the system over there is now changing. For example, this group here built 250 bomb shelters, cared for hundreds of, hundreds of Holocaust survivors, and they spend $250 million, $25 million a year on humanitarian projects over there. And the Interior Ministry of Israel just revoked their passports. And they're getting rid of them. So my theory on it is, and I can't prove it, this is all leading up to the second coming. When Israel is overrun by the Antichrist, the country's being evacuated. My guess is they're all running to Jordan or Syria somewhere to get out of Israel when he comes down. And uh, they're going to move Christianity completely out of Israel. They're going to get rid of it all. And that's going to be near the end for them. Because none of it makes any sense. Why would you get rid of a Christian organization that's not trying to convert any Jews? They're just giving you stuff. So that's, that's satanic on the face of it. Makes no sense. And the last one, now that you're enormously tired, you're not as tired as I am, though. Oh, Danny. In uh, Washington, D.C., uh, pro-life people had some t-shirts made up. And the t-shirts said, Black Pre-born lives matter. They were, uh, you know, scrawling stuff on the on the sidewalks in front of abortion clinics. The abortion people called the cops. The cops came over and arrested them for writing pre black pre-born lives matter. On the, they went to jail. <laughs> They sued Washington, D.C. and lost. The uh, judge dismissed the case. It went to the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals said, yes, the pro-life chalk writers are allowed to do that because they had presented evidence in court that right down the street, Black Lives Matter had written their stuff all over buildings and sidewalks and everything else, you know, everywhere. And the court ruled that the city, the state, whatever, is not allowed to determine what social message you put in your writing. If you're going to allow these social messages, you then have to allow that one. Okay. And so the people that were writing this chart, they won their case. Hard to believe some equality showed up. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, how'd that go? Yeah. You get a lot of weird stuff taught here when you come here. We kind of cover everything, including Denny's. The uh, Grand Slam is, is good if you can keep it down. Uh, <laughs> Now, last night I was talking about uh, uh, the demons from childhood last night. Was anybody here last night that heard that? You know, and I kind of went through that system of how spirits take over people's lives. They do it when they're young, you know, and then just briefly I went through it. They, they teach the child to listen to thoughts that are not theirs. Because spirit beings, angels, demons, God, whatever, can put thoughts in your human beings' minds. 
They can get into your dreams. They can enter your subconscious. They can give you nightmares, um, bad dreams. Um, uh, Joseph had an angel, Gabriel, was in his dream, came to him in a dream, in his subconscious, three times. And uh, these spirits are able to do the same thing. Demons cause nightmares, all that stuff. And uh, when the kid is young, Liddy, they put thoughts in the kid's mind, trying to get the child to receive it as their own thought. And so they keep doing that over and over again until the child reaches a certain point where they respond, you know, and it's like the demon would say, there, there's an apple, look, it's red, look over there. And as soon as the kid looks and follows that thought, then, then the, they got them. They're hooked. The fish is on the hook. And so now they can start manipulating the child's life. So they flip over from benign stuff and good stuff to bad stuff, evil stuff. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a, um, an attempt by them to put the child basically in a living the life of being at a carnival where you go into the funhouse mirror, you go in there and your neck is way up there, your gut's way out there, your legs are short, and you go there and you just keep morphing yourself into this asinine person. And that's what they do. They turn you into a puppet for them even though they don't have total control over you like I do this paper. It's uh, like social media. It's uh, like TikTok and they're influencers. And as soon as a person thinks the demon's thoughts are their thoughts, then the person is easily led into God only knows what. Then what they do is they coordinate with the child's environment and they use their crazy parents and siblings as stimulators. So it's a combination of destruction. They use the idiot, that's the mother, saying something stupid to them reacting to it inappropriately. So the mother's demons say something negative to the kid. They put another thought in there. They don't love you. You know, why don't you do it? Oh, they hate you. And it's a combo job, like a speed bag in the gym, beating your mind into submission. Using this person, then when they go to school, it ramps up like that. As soon as you go to grade school, now you're in real trouble. Now the demons have got more sources to bring at the kid to develop this bad self-concept low self-esteem. Bullying is one of their favorite techniques, beating the kid down. And so the person starts to think of themselves as useless, worthless, valueless, second-rate, low-rate, doormat, a failure, a loser, not good enough, unworthy, unloved, uncared, all these thoughts keep pouring into the kid. If the person by chance is raised in a family where the demons can't do that, the parents are kind and loving and supportive, then they bring in peer pressure to do other things, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, and then they get in that way. Okay? So the small percent are the ones that have good parents believe it or not, most the vast majority of families, their parents are jacked. There are some out there that are pretty darn good parents, but it's a, it's a minority percent. Most parents are screwed up. And the demons will use anything they can, in the family or out of it, to get you to think the way they want you to think. Okay, And you can see that now in our society overtly with the government coming out with all this total insanity.
trying to control us and manipulate us to get us to do what they want us to do. That's their job, and that's what's going to happen. We're going to be doing what they want us to do, and they're not going to stop. Well, that's what the demons are doing, but it's in secret. Right? That poor guy in the hall last night, I liked the guy. Uh, I wish he was here. Talk about a preacher. Uh, if this guy got on this other track, this guy would be a preaching machine and strong. I would love to have that guy get delivered and just come on the team here. I would take him with open arms, with hugs and kisses. This guy would be blowing demons out of blocks of people at the same time. Did you hear him out there bellowing? Oh, it's fantastic. He looked good too. Great looking guy. I mean, he would, he would be fantastic. I'd love to have him come back. Hopefully his wife can get him delivered and he can come <laughs> But that poor guy had no idea that spirits in his brain, religious demons, had told him to get us all straightened out. He had, he had no idea. And that's how they, how they work. They, you don't have any idea what they're doing. It's all secret. And you get manipulated, you get hurt, and you, and you don't see it. Particularly when you're under pressure. Yep. Particularly under pressure. You just go with them. And so what they do, they train you like a pet seal to react to your environment in a certain way based on your, how they've trained you in your past, right? So, if you were raised by a screaming, drunk, yelling dad, you know, you, you're naturally triggerable to men who are screaming, yelling, <laughs> big, big mouth men. And so, at school, at work, at church, when you run into a person that reminds you of your dad, you've already been preconditioned to react negatively to that person. Doesn't matter what the circumstances were. None of that, your emotions don't care. Emotions don't think. Your emotions just simply react. And that's what they want you to do. They want to train you to react emotionally. And if by any chance you get saved later on, they then switch their tactics and go, well, instead of driving this person to hell, we're going to drive them to backsliding. And here's how we'll do it. We'll keep putting crazy thoughts in their mind, religious thoughts, false doctrine thoughts, false belief thoughts. Then we will send them, people in the church, to piss them off. To, to hurt them, to not consider, to not be, blah, blah, blah. And then we will get their soul to emotionally react to that behavior of that Christian kook. And then on and on it goes. And then the point of it all is to keep their anointing here for decades and then see if they can, boom, get you to backslide. If we could get a demon up here today and ask him, hey, listen, why don't you abandon Satan today and just cough up the truth? Just, just give it to us. We would be sitting here with our mouths hanging on, literally. If, he, if a demon come up here and said, well, here's what we're really doing, we would all be on the floor in a state of shock. This is how we manipulate this person, this type of person. This is what we do for that one. This is what we do for this one. And right on down the line. I mean, it's all right in the textbook. And it's enormously effective. It's like, uh, you know, a guitar. Here's your soul. There's your mind. Boom. What do we got to do to play this guy today? Well, this is a... This is a Soul day, boing. Why were you late? Oh, I don't like that tone of voice. It reminds me of my dad. Boom, trigger. And there they go. It's all training. Right? Everything's training. 
If I'm sitting at my desk at home and I swing the chair around, it squeaks. And I stand up to go get something to drink in the kitchen, it squeaks. Lexi, the dog, is standing there meeting me. She heard the chair squeak. I never said a word. But she knows she's been trained like a demon trains a kid. When you hear that noise, when you hear, hear that sigh, oh, oh, trigger, no word spoken. You're trained from childhood to react negatively to something. And what you try to do with God's word in renewing your mind is to break that process apart, to stop it, to crack it. By renewing your mind, you're able to see behind the curtain and see what the demons are doing. If the person never renews their mind and they don't ever develop any discernment, they live just like that till they drop dead and it never changes. They, they never get any better. Never. I told a story last night about that pedophile guy I've been working with for years. Amazing. Now these SMIs are going to be coming in. You go, it's going to require your maximum level of patience. These people, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. The seriously mentally ill people, we're starting to get them to drift in. We had two come in yesterday. One in the hall here, and then earlier, the guy was off his meds. Okay, so we want them to come here because we're, we're trying to get them healed. But uh, they're going to put more pressure on you. They're going to put pressure on you, right? And so, SMIs are the same as us. They're just ramped up. But the process is the same. Only it's worse. So if you have a negative thinking pattern, an SMI's pattern is here. Now here, it's way up there. Okay. And if you don't have the person's cooperation and their free will, we're probably not going to be able to help them. And some of these people that are being sent here are plants. They're sent here designed to wear you out and burn up your good love and your heart of gold and turn it into a heart of frustration. And anybody who's married to someone who's got mental problems knows how tough it is to be constantly bombarded by all of their nonsense. You tell them to do something 50 times, it didn't sink in. You bail them out 50 times, it didn't work. Now we need the 51st one. And so people that live with people that are mentally ill are just worn out. Worn out. The people that have mentally ill children are, are ignorant. They think it's chemical imbalances or bad medication or something. They don't understand the person has spirits and that the patient is being used by them to get the parents. Their goal is to bring down the parents. They've already got the child. Now they want the parents. Now they want the siblings. Demons are never satisfied. They're never satisfied. If you're doing something stupid, that's good, but let's do something more stupid. If you're sinning, good, that's that you're doing a good job. Let's sin more. They never stop. Okay? And the more the 
SMI listens to them, the sicker they get. And their goal is to send them where I used to counsel over at the state hospital. Okay? The state hospital is pretty much full now, so what they do is they put the patients on court order injections, right? And they are required by law to come in. They have a, a medical probation officer of sorts. And you have to be in every day at this date and you get your shot. Because we can't put you away anymore. We don't have any room at all. And what's going to happen in the future, our, our entire society is going to be overrun. To give you an example, a simple one. Just yesterday, somebody came across the street to look at Rick's house. You know, he was thinking of selling it. I don't think he is anymore, but he never took it off the MLS. So anyway, these people come over to look. It's just a block away from here. They come over to look at the house. And uh, they want to use it as, as a church and a uh, uh, residential center. For who? Well, we've got 50 Haitians that have nowhere to live, and we're, the government is giving us money to buy a facility to house them, and they're going to keep supporting them. Right across the street, 50 Haitians. <laughs> In New York City, they are busing full bus loads of people being bussed out of New York City to upstate New York, dumping them in small towns, and it's coming here. In Tucson, the wall that was built is opened now. They're, they're catching 200 people a day coming through the just south of Tucson, just Tucson, Tucson. 200 a day now, 200 a day will come fast, they'll catch them. And they said they're, they're losing or missing about a fourth. So there's 50 or 60 or something people per day coming, walking right over into Arizona. They, they have no food, they have no shelter, they've got nowhere to go. They're flooding our society. Flight. That's on top of Satan raking our streets with homeless people, tents and poor people and drug addicts and mentally ill patients flooding our major cities. It's happening right this second. Well, I said that to say this. We're going to be getting people coming here. One day, a, a dad dropped a guy off, his son. Oh, yeah, they, take, they have a residential facility. Do you remember that? Dropped him off here in the front with a suitcase. The kid comes in the door, comes down here to the prayer room, walks in there, and sets up his new home. Right here. Right in that room right there. Prayer room right there. Just walks in. His dad goes, bless you guys, boop. He screeches out of the driveway like Formula One race car driver. Couldn't wait to get rid of his son. And, and like I said earlier, these people are worn out with their kids. Their kids are wearing them out. Eh? He come right down here. Mo he moved in. He was unpacking his stuff. Remember that? And we had to call, call the dad back. I don't know how we got his number. Somebody got it and said, Dad, you know, turn around. Screech back here. <laughs> but this kind of stuff here accelerates. It's going to accelerate like you can't believe. And it's not going to stop. It's not going to. America has changed. And the old America is done. It's over. And it's, we're not going back. We're not going back. We're going to have to adjust. But anyway, what we want to do is get as many of these people healed as possible. So if you have a regular person like you, like last night, these people have got these negative thoughts come in. Well, SMI is like that. Boom, 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 boom. You know, if you had five bad thoughts, they had 50. 
If you had 10, they had 100. Okay. And the only way to minister to them is to take it one thought at a time. And that's why I mentioned earlier, you've got to have the patience of Job when you're working with these mentally ill people. <clears throat> so what I do is I take a copy of, of this chapter here. I have a copy of that chapter here in Pigs in the Parlor. Chapter 21. I take a copy of it. And I set the person down. And then I have to make an assessment of what's their cognitive level of functioning. Okay? If they're out of their minds, we're not going to be able to help them. If we can't get any truth in there at all, it, it's too much. They're gone. Okay? If they are able to help them, which most of them come here, we're able to help them to a certain extent. I give them that packet and I explain to them. Usually they come in with a parent, hopefully, or a, a spouse. I say, now listen, I explain to the spouse what I explained to that person in kind of a group setting. Here's what we're facing. These are the spirits in the kid's head. Okay? So in this particular case, it's schizophrenia. If you've got a schizophrenia demon in your head, he's in charge of all the other demons. His IQ is off the charts. He's enormously intelligent, much smarter than we are. And he's running the show. And if the person won't accept his thoughts, he'll actually talk to them. And they can hear him just as clear as I'm talking to you. He's talking to them in their head. And he's explaining why you are an idiot. And everything you're saying is, of course, preposterous. And here's the real truth. You were born on Mars. Yeah. You will be giving birth to the Antichrist. And you're fine. Don't listen to her. And you're going to, no, you have to shut that system down. Now, what was the thought you had? I just felt like this. No, okay. And I'll write it out. And this is what you said right here, right? Okay, now we know that wasn't from God. We know God wouldn't say something that stupid, right? Now, I didn't say it. Now, do you believe that? Look at that. Do you believe it? So I have to, like a second grader, use all their five senses to try to get them to see exactly what's going on. And make them repent of every one of them. Now, you, you said that, and you received that thought. That is wrong. And you need to repent to God for that. And I make them repent of that thought. I'm no good. And then I give them a scripture to bolster it. Yes, but I, oh, but, what was that but? Hold on. I write it down. There's the but. Okay, now, now would, would God say that? No. Okay, now, do you really believe that? I didn't say it. Who said this? Who said you're no good? Who said I'm an alien? Who told you that I was an alien? Okay. You cannot listen to demons. I went over it last night in the teaching. Jesus never listened to demons, even when they were telling him true things. He would not receive any information from them. It's not what they're saying, it's who's saying it. Demons say true things, but they're, they're using it as flattery or manipulation. They're not using it as trying to help you or inform you. And you've got to take each thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's why it said that. You take every taking every thought captive, right? 2 Corinthians 10, to the obedience of Christ. This thought you just had is false. Isn't it? Yes, it, yeah, you're right, it is. Okay. Now you need to repent of that thought and you need to correct it. You need to repent of that and stop it. Who gave you that thought? And then I pull out the chart. Oh. Well, it sound, that sounds like a rejection demon to me. 
Yeah, you said, I'm no good. No one loves me. Oh, really? Wouldn't he say that? Now you've got to repent of that. You cannot listen to demons give you thoughts like that. You just had a perverted thought? Oh, you, had, you just had a thought about having sex with a goat. Oh, you did, huh? What's that? That looks like fantasy lust, doesn't it? That's a lust demon. Okay. Now, God would never say that, would he? No. Well, I didn't say it. Do, do, you, do you believe that? Do you like that thought? Goat sex? Is that a hobby of yours? No, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, you're listening to demons. Let's get a repentance going. Come on, right now. I force them to do it. You see that? Now, in a normal person that's not mentally ill, you can say, now look, you know the difference between a negative thought and a positive thought, right? They'll pause, then you start panicking. <laughs> then they say yes, oh, and then you're a little relieved. Okay, you know negative thoughts don't come from God, he never uses them. So he's out, now, I didn't say it, so I'm out. Who said it? Did you say it? Okay, you've got to stop it. Now let's repent of it right now. And they'll start getting deliverance right at the altar there. You know, it's not like an SMI. They'll, they'll get it. Yeah. So how do you discern, because you said the, these comfort demons will, will tell you the truth. So how mm -hmm. do you discern whether that truth is godly or from the demon? Like last night, for example, old Roberts opened a hospital. Mm -hmm. How could he have known, or how could you know that that was not a proper use of his time and money? Well, you can't if you don't set up a system of cross-checking. See, with, with uh, people like Roberts and Baker and everybody, they don't have a system set up that cross-checks what they're thinking. Because everybody around them is a yes man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all worshipers of the person. Adulation. Oh, you're the boss. You're great. Okay. When you surround yourself by fanny kissers, you will eventually become a loser. When people give you alternative information, that's a blessing to you, not a criticism of you. Well, I think we had to do it this way. So I'm the boss and I'm on the pedestal. Well, wait a minute. What about if there's nobody around to go, what about like Oral and all these major movie stars and everything? There's no way to check it. In the prophetic movement, all these demons transfer back and forth and God told them uh, seven times in the Bible, uh, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is to be established. Seven times that's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. They don't do it. If you look at someone and you respect them and you think they're wonderful and they have a high anointing and they tell you, the Lord told me that this, bloop, they accept it. The Bible says, do not accept that. It has to have two or three confirmations. Because nobody is God. People are not God. I, nobody knows everything. Last night at the altar, I'm talking at the end of the service. I met a gal, beautiful woman, great personality, solid Christian, prophetic, went to the courts of heaven. <clears throat> the only reason these kooky doctrines 
gets established is because everybody gets two or three confirmations from God whether or not that's a fact. This guy here, Dr. Cummings, I just read it to you, didn't go to Christ and get two or three confirmations of that light he saw at the bottom of the river. Did he? No, he didn't. He just came back, started speaking engagements and telling the patients, there's a checks and balance system set up that a celebrity doesn't have because everybody's a butt kisser. And that's how Oral got caught. Baker got caught. It's not just Christianity, it's everywhere. Politicians, businessmen, every, they just accept everything they say and it's like God's talking to them, you know? Yeah. Warren Buffett, the Oracle, that's his nickname, the Oracle. Yeah? yeah, the guy knows more about stocks than anybody on the planet, I'll give you that. But everything the guy says is correct and you, you, you believe everything Warren says, you know? That's foolish, isn't it? Most of what he says, yeah, I, I, I'm on board. The, the guy's great, absolutely. The best in the business. But everything he says, you're being led astray. And that's why you see so many, Jesus said, people are like sheep. That's what human beings are like, they're like sheep. <laughs> they just follow the next big deal. Fad, everything. That's the way Americans are in particular. We're fad-oriented people. What's the next big thing? And boom, people just go. That's why you can make a fortune getting into marketing. Because marketing is using lies and making them look beautiful, as Anna Nicole Smith used to say. I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you take a bunch of crap, you package it, and you turn the pig into a flower, and then you get somebody to sucker it. And that's marketing. You present it in its best fabricated light. Right? We used to call them, before, in the Western days, they called them snake oil salesmen. That was their name. A snake oil salesman. What's a snake oil salesman? It's somebody that just made a story up about some crap in a bottle that cures literally everything. And so, drink it, wipe it, it fixes everything. It's all marketing. It's got a great label. And that's what the devil does. He's a marketing expert, a marketing genius. He's the best there is. Yes, sir. Uh, when, you, when you started first working with Doug Baldwin, so you would, you'd say he was an SMI, right? That's what he said in his teaching. Who, Dave? Dave, yeah. Yeah, it's schizoaffective. Okay, so when you started working with him, you got him to so take some, some truths. How long was it before you started casting the image out of him? Was that, would you go through a few sessions of just, just no. doing that first, getting their mind a little bit renewed, get some truths in there, and then are, are they under the... Um, could they possibly get worse if they're not taking their thoughts captive like that? Uh, a Baldwin was a little different. Okay, uh, he started out like that, but then he went on his own and he started doing really good with self-deliverance. And so he, he kind of took off. And uh, we didn't work with him much after he was initially, got his initial uh, releases. Yeah, and so he kind of learned how to, he very studious, kind of renewed his mind on his own, did a lot of self-deliverance. Yeah, I wish everybody was like Dave Baldwin. Now, this, we'd be a piece of cake around here. But he's in minority. But your question is, yeah, if they don't keep taking their thoughts captive, they'll get reinfected and they'll lose their mental illness healing. Yeah, you can lose any kind of healing that God gives you if you don't maintain it. You have to maintain your faith or you'll lose it. You got to use. You got to maintain your gifts, or you'll lose it. Timothy was losing his gifts, 
And Paul said, stir up the gift that is in you. God's not giving you, Timothy, a, a spirit of fear. So Timothy was sinking. And Paul was trying to grab him and pull him out. Get back, man of God. Remember? That's what he said. Yes. Yeah, so... Everybody has to do their own maintenance or, or everyone will sink. No one is a, no one's above the law. That's a, unless you're a politician. No one's above the law. No one's above main, following God's laws. No one. And the devil will catch anybody. If he can get somebody like Oral or A.A. A. Allen, well, he can get anybody. He can get anybody. If he can get them. I mean, they had anointings that were like off the hook. We would die for that. And he, he's got, again, if the demon was my guest speaker, he just, well, now, yeah, we got a faith healer program. Here's that program. Here, here's your evangelical program. I, who are you working with now? I got Greg Laurie going here. I had Luis Palau going over here. We had Billy Graham going this way. Okay, got it. There's a program for everybody. I know that sounds nuts, but uh, you, you look at somebody as great as Billy Graham. This guy was a preaching machine, had, had a heart of gold, uh, integrity, rock solid. And the demon said, hey, Billy, come here, we want to talk to you. This salvation thing is great. And here's how you organize your crusades. You get all these churches to help you fill out these cards, give each church a card, and get these people going to their churches, move on to the next town, preach Christ, go get them. He did. Town to town, country to country. Oh, man, the guy was great. He'd get the cards filled out. He'd give them to the churches that were helping the crusade. He'd be like a blackjack dealer. Boom. See you on the next crusade. Churches follow up with the people. Of course, they backslide right after that. Gone. What about healing and deliverance, Bill? Uh, go see Oral. You know, and no. No. They got a program for everybody. Last night was the weirdest service I've had since I've had my prison ministry. And I was very encouraged. I wasn't very encouraged at Denny's, but <laughs> whenever you get adversity, when it ramps up, an anointing is coming behind it. And they know it is. I don't know how they know that. I've seen that work unfailing over the years. When things start getting rough, that means something really good is about to break. And last night, that was a green light to me all the way. I loved it. Mentally ill guy running around here. Crazy preacher running over there. Everybody staring at me during the teaching like I was from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> no one moving. Is this thing on? Are you moving? I couldn't believe it. But then at the altar call, oh. <laughs> Man, there he goes. There he goes. Running from one person to the other with love. Yeah. So it got weird. That's a green light. That's a positive. Don't see that as a negative. Adversity is a plus. A plus. If the devil's leaving you alone, you're not worth much. When they start to manifest like that, there's something stirring them up to the Holy Spirit. You mean in the ancient, in the person? Yeah. Like that's yeah. In the, yes. Yeah, that's the Holy Ghost. They're afraid of him. Yeah, and they're manifesting. They, they're scared. That's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, um, in the past, you and, you and Brother Rick have said, demons are assigned to people. They also said, like, like, 
Don't let people put their hands on you because the demons can transfer. So how does that work? Kind of like breathing. Okay. So do we make hands or no? I, w I wouldn't do it if I was you unless you knew what you were doing. It's risky. Even if you cover yourself in the blood of Jesus? Nah, that won't work. Now, yeah. there's, no, there's no coverage coverage for ignorance. So if, if you're an average Christian and this witch needs to be delivered, I wouldn't walk up in the name of Jesus. I wouldn't do that. Pray for him over here. Don't g grab a witch. You're asking for it. Unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah? So if you're one of the prayer ministries, ministers, and people are coming up to you, they say, don't touch them. You're talking about here or at a church? Oh, at a church. I, I wouldn't do it. No. They do it all the time over there. Yeah, yeah they're trans, they, they transfer them left and right. They don't know what they're doing. No, total ignorance. You don't know who that person is. Yeah. They could have been on porn five minutes before that service. You don't know them. You don't live with them. Do you? No. They could have been. They could be in witchcraft now. <laughs> we get sick people coming in here all the time. I mean, you have no idea what they've been involved in. You can't trust them. So unless you know, you know, unless your anointing is solid and you know what you're doing, I wouldn't do the hands laid on hands stuff at all. That's you risky. You're related to somebody? Like, my, my grandbaby, she's only three, and she's got, like, serious anger. Like, she'll go in these anger, you know, stomp her feet. And she's no, she's already infected, so... Okay, so how do I, is it... Well, I would, I would get them out of there if I was your grandma. I, I am, but she, my okay. daughter um, and my mom, which is my daughter's grandma, they all three live together, and my mom is, is always... You know, blessing her with holy water, all this stuff. I'm like, oh no. And my mom is got mental issues. So I'm like, I think there's some kind of going on right there. Correct. They're all transferring around. That's yeah, right. So how do I stop? How do I break that? How do I? Well, that's hard because grandma's got free will. So you can't cast demons out of somebody who, who doesn't A, believe they have them or B, wants to keep them. Okay, so you can pray for them. If I were you, I'd keep praying what you're already doing, right? Well, I have authority over my child and my grandbaby. Yep. I'm the grandma, right? You're, yes, I sir. have that authority. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I do that. But don't don't go down to the church A and do that. Right. You know, I don't the, know we, you guys have, have we, other people, but I can okay. be compelled to, like, I have the right. Right. Because Alexander's mom and yeah. my grandbaby, I do have that power. Okay. Go, go for it. Cool. Right. Absolutely. God sent you there to help them. But don't go down the street and do that. See? You got to really know what you're doing, and you got to learn, learn to be led, or you're going to pick up something, and that's scary when you pick something up. Do we have authority as a father uh, or a mother to alleviate a curse in our family tree? Just by virtue of our confession and repentance as the father, without the involvement, the deliberate involvement of our kids or our parents. So I have evidence of, of generational curses that are being passed from my father to me, to my daughter. Even though she's a, on fire for Christ, she's got an affliction on her. Will, I, will my repentance alleviate her from that torment? I uh, know. Hers would. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get her to repent so she can get delivered. Yours would for you. Okay. Yeah, you could get it broke off you. Yeah. Yeah, we can't break stuff off and get people healed who don't want to be healed. They got free will, so God, God doesn't usually work like that. So you said something key that don't want to be healed because when I was here two years ago with Melissa in my session, my very first one for hours, the at the same, my daughter, I only confirmed this because my daughter at the time was suffering from, uh, she was a meth addiction, she was shooting up and all this stuff, it got really bad. We weren't talking for five months, like, ever. And we didn't, she didn't know I was here, but we confirmed it that she was being released, like, in the midst of my deliverance. It's the only way we can put it is the Holy Ghost ran to Alex and was broken with all those strongholds and everything that were in her, because that's what we were praying for, me and Melissa. And... It totally, she's 18 months clean now. She never ah. stopped. Yeah, like it really, 
I mean, we, when we saw the dates, I was, just, I was like, I was precisely in my deliverance with Melissa at that time. So I was talking up as, that's Jesus, that, that, that's God, because I, you know, prayed over her. And she's sober now, and she's just got baptized on her own. She's coming here um, in a couple months, you know, but this is all her doing. I just kind of put those little pieces in there because I'm the mom, and she honors me and respects me because I, I want that courage back on me because I do that with my mom and my dad. So she's respectful towards me. She doesn't ever want that curse on. She's repented. So. Wow. Sounds like you got a nice yeah. anointing. But, but the key word was that you said she was well. She wanted to be healed. She just didn't. She was like held in bondage. Yeah. So if you want that, in her, if she wanted that in her spirit, me as a mother in a deliverance, that can't happen. But the key is they have to want it. Right? Right. So that's kind of cool. Unless you're talking about the baby. Your grand little one. Three year old. Yeah, that's a different deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think what, I, what, I, what I'm sensing is, or what I understand, is standing in the gap for somebody. Like in the case of the curses, you would stand in the gap for the sins of your ancestors so they don't follow down the rest of your ancestry. Yeah. That's not going to work. Standing in the gap mean praying for them? Well, you repent for those sins, and so that way it'll, it stops with you. I doubt it's going to work. Do you repent for someone else's sins? Right. Uh, no. Well, you know, the Bible says uh, four to ten generations. Right. That's how curses come down, yeah. Yes. And then you're talking about something different subject. Yeah, but at some point, I guess we as believers understand those curses and repent for them. That way they don't continue. On you or on all the others? On us and everyone from us. No, have you ever seen that work? I don't know. <laughs> no, you haven't. That doesn't work, okay? You can do it for yourself, but you can't do it for your family tree. Okay. Yeah. So actions can bring on a curse on your family. One person's actions can bring a curse on right. generations of people, but yeah. but not when it comes to repentance for them. Right. The action of repentance can't stop a generational curse, but the sin that it can on you. But the sin of that one person, the father or mother, can pass on a yeah. curse to other people that are not responsible for that sin. Yeah. Or even in the womb. They even get in the womb. The demons attack people in the womb. You can put curses on kids in the wombs. They've done it. <clears throat> if, you, if you get somebody pregnant and then the, the dad says, well, we're getting an abortion. I want, that, I want that baby dead. That's a word curse on a kid in a womb. The demons will attack the kid. Or it's yeah. like you can, I had to stop my daughter from your um, teachings when she was pregnant. She she was saying she wanted a boy. She wanted a boy. I said stop saying that because you're basically bringing a curse, a spirit of rejection on. Just pray to God that it's healthy. You know, you, because I think it, you know, it turned out to be a girl. So she stopped that immediately. So I didn't want her because I was the one with spirit of rejection. But some people don't, and then they're, then they're disappointed at the child's birth. That happens all the time. That's. That's so really that's spirit of rejection, correct? Yes. Okay. Rejected in the womb. Uh, yes, it leads to all kinds of stuff. Yep. Yeah, I want a boy. And you get a girl. Oh. Right. Okay. And that's gonna the de demons will take advantage of that. They sure will. Exactly. She well she immediately repented because I showed her the Bible and I mean, so you can she can stop it. She yeah, repented. Stopped you, it. She stopped it because repentance will stop anything. Yeah. What happened to Hannah in Pigs in the Parlor? Right. Mom wanted a, a girl. Tell her that. <laughs> it's a great book. I don't have it on me. Uh, Pigs in the Parlor. Oh, okay. It's in the bookstore. Ooh. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably the best book on deliverance ever written. Wow. Yeah, now that's where this map is. Chapter 21 right here. Wow. Chapter 21 right here. The mental illness chapter. Pigs in the parlor, number one book. We sell it in the, in the yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's pink. Okay. I thought that we could actually break generational curses. And you said that you're saying no. Yeah. Because it's not on yourself. But 
you know, when you pray to break generational curses. Without them being around or cooperating? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, as far as generational curses, at least from what I understand, it's like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, if breaking them off of ourselves, and also, like, for example, I'm not married, I don't have kids, but I can stop it from continuing with them. But as far as someone who's already alive and born, I cannot take it off of them. Are, are they adults? Well, I'm, asking, I'm like giving an example of more like, um, so, like how they're talking about HOV, take it off of her kids. But if they're already Your kids? Alive, no, 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 I'm giving an example. Um, if, like, say someone's already alive, I can't repent for them. I can't break the curses off of them. But if I were later to have kids and I'm over here taking the curses off of myself, would it stop it from going to my children? To yeah, later? yours, right. not, the, not the neighbors. Right. All right, thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Can we just recap a little? You said assess if the person when you're having a conversation with them if it's nor their normal or SMI, right? Uh -huh. and then you would identify the thoughts and get them to repent. Which one? A normal person? Well, I guess yes. Okay. SMI, person. yeah. Both. For both, right? Mm -hmm. okay. But the SMI is going to require a lot more patience and work on your part. Because mm -hmm. they have more negative thoughts than this person, and they're stronger than this person. And then once they repent, then you can rebuke that spirit? Or? Get, they can. You get them to, with you, do it. You do it together. Out. Okay. Now they have to be on board. Their will. Yeah, sorry. Right. Hmm. right. So after each thought, you get the demon out? With the SMI? Yeah. yeah with each, with e no. no. No, with each thought, uh, I kind of look at a pattern of thoughts. Like, let's say you had a cluster of thoughts of low self-esteem. Uh, I'm fat, I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I'm no good, I'm unworthy. You know, that kind of cluster. The, I would go through all those first and then take a shot at it. Not with each one thought. No, that's that won't work. Because you got a, a similar thought already left there. They're both similar. Self-deprecation. Self-rejection. Right. In the cluster, you have yeah. like the title. Yeah. Well, in my mind, it's not an official right. title, but let's say lust, 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 this type of lust, that. The, the, I try to get that whole section repented of, and then go after the lust demons, right? Hate, 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 hate thoughts. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness, ought, 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 right? They're all similar. Right. They're, they're easy to track. So you're identifying them as the Yeah. Path. Then I go after the, the demon, yes. It's, like, it's easier to do that way. <clears throat> what if the mother and father of the child aren't on the same page, but the father, the mother's willing, but the father's not. And the father curses the child, and the mother tries to revoke it. Tries to what? Like, um, it to work, like revoke it. Oh, the mother tries to help the child, but the dad's not. Yeah. I take a shot at it. You know, the dad's rotten, the mother's good, and the child's infected. If I got the mother on board, then I'll have her and me pray for the dad, and then I would get the kid delivered. We got one of the parents, so in my experience, it's worth going forward. Because a lot of times, you won't have both parents. There's a divorce. This one moved to Guam. And the mother then comes in with the child. Well, forget about it. I'm, we'll pray, ask God to forgive him, and then, then let's get this kid delivered. Because I got the mother's authority, and that's all I need. I just go with that. Okay. I know. What if the father legally presses his way back through and all whatever curses and whatnot back? with 
Can you reword that again? In an abusive relationship, if the person makes his way back without, uh, what she say? <laughs> it's, Are you worried about the influence the father would have on the child? No, it's like um, spiritually. Yeah, he's in like, the life of the child. Yeah, like um, like the the abuse, not only physical but verbally, mentally, spiritually, and but he won't cut ties. He's hanging on, and every like, every phone call you get, it's a breakdown. It's not, or either that a phone call you get, you, you have hope that he changed or it the matter had changed because he said he goes to church, he started to go to church, and then later on, uh, it all goes back to the hell it came out from. Something like that. I don't know. I don't know like, does he, he have any power as the father? Because my father's the same way. He's, he he's curses all of his children, like with his mouth, and him being the father of the family, he's got authority. So how do we protect ourselves from that? Because we can't, we can't undo who our parents are. That's kind of what I'm hate my daughter, but like, how do I um, spiritually uh, um, set her up for something I wouldn't have? Before. I don't know how to put it. How to protect your child spiritually from the father? Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, in Matthew 18, it says you have the power to bind his demons. Hmm. Right? Not cast them out, but bind them. So I, what I think she's saying is that the father keeps attacking the kid. Yeah, that's a common thing. <clears throat> that, that happens all the time. The one parent brings the kid in for prayer. That's, that's very common. Yeah, and then they go home, and the, the other parent is rotten. Yeah, that happens all the time. You have to do some serious like spiritual work. Yeah, you can bind the because it's the demons in the other parent that's attacking the kid. It's not the parent. They know that the mother brought the kid in. They know that. So they're at home waiting for the kid. And the yeah, and the family. They're going to launch an attack when they get home. And it has to be constant, right? Constantly in God's word, constantly praying over your child, constantly putting on their armor if they're not able to on their own. It's just a constant. And praying for the dead. And praying for the dead. Yeah, that's the key. So that would keep somebody protected? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you can bind their spirits. You can't cast them out because he wants to keep them, right? Hmm. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Dead. What if they're dead? Those family members. If they're, if, if they're dead, their demons are, they leave the dead body and then they go <coughs> find somebody in the family to infect. Yeah. They stay in that family tree. So, yeah, the, kid, the demon's already been cast out. At the time you're dead, they, they naturally leave. That's what it says in uh, Matthew 12. It's Jesus said, uh, he, he told him a parable, and it had a bifurcated meaning. So if you look at the text in Matthew 12 and Luke 11, and you add the context together, add the context, you'll see a spirit, uh, when a spirit leaves a man, he goes through deserty, dry places looking for rest and having found none, comes back to the house that he left and finding it swept and garnished and decorated he invites seven other spirits to come back with him who are more wicked than himself. And so there was a bifurcated meaning to that. A, us in deliverance, and B, Israel as a nation. So it was a parable illustrating their rejection of their Messiah and everything coming in seven times worse, which a few decades later, the Romans came in and wiped them out. And the other one is us, when a spirit leaves a 
man, it says. Uh, Isercomai is the Greek word there. It's not the Greek word ekbalo, cast out. It meant transition out. So if a spirit voluntarily leaves a person, they get better. Then they come back. And it says the person, in their view, is a house to live in. And that's what demons do. They look for a human body as a house. And so they move in, only this time they're going to bring company back. So in our scenario, not the Israel, if somebody goes through deliverance and they don't they keep their deliverance and don't renew their mind and don't repent, and they get reinfected, they could get sicker than they were before they came to see us originally, which is depressing. Yeah. yeah. So how do you protect against that? Well, the demons, the demons can't get back in if you uh, are now a learning spiritual warfare and you've renewed and changed your mind and you're now fighting back. They can't get back in. They only get back in when there's openings. If the person has an opening that they opened deliberately or inadvertently. Okay, so I would have probably picked up a transfer last night if I had kept going with that maniac in the hall. But as soon as uh, I said, I said, uh, will you show me a scripture where it says Christians can't have demons? And oh, he exploded. And I realized that I was exhausted from the three-hour service. I was pooped. And uh, as you get older, <laughs> your poopy times <laughs> accelerate. Okay. When I was young, I never got pooped. I went 24-7, nonstop, like a, an animal. Now, I'm kind of a wounded caterpillar. I crawl in here, and I crawl out to my car. So as soon as I recognized, click, hey Mike, you're exhausted, I had to pull out of that and stop. But if I kept swinging, and I think I would have probably gotten frustrated, angry, and picked up a transfer, because I was tired. And as Vince Lombardi once said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. People that are tired, demons take advantage of. If you're tired, they look for an opening. They'll, and they'll get it. And had I gotten mad and emotional and kept that going, I, I could have picked something up. I could have got fooled by the teaching that I teach. <laughs> Here, I was reading your post deliverance, and that's very helpful. Post deliverance? The sheet that you have. That's helpful. And learning to not be reinvented. Learning what? To not be reinfected. I, yeah. just want to, I don't know if everyone knows what? there is a post deliverance sheet that you can reference. Mm -hmm. It's on the website too. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, <coughs> recently reading that Battling the Hulsa Hell from like when were we? The White One, you know? And he had mentioned that when he first got into deliverance too, they, were, they battled demons all night long, and that he, uh, when he was really tired one night, they were battling a witch, and then all of a sudden, there was three spirits that entered into him um, at night. And he, he goes into it in detail how how bad it was, but he had said that it was because he was they they hit him with weary and tired and, and all that stuff. So that does happen. Yeah, I read that. That's that. That's what would have happened to me. Yeah. I had to back the truck up. <laughs> You got to know when to hold them and. <laughs> is it normal? Sorry, is it normal to because I live in uh, Houston. As I was getting closer to coming here, I was getting bombarded with with negative thoughts. I mean, bombarded where I was almost getting lost in them, and so I had to. Um, I couldn't. I had to put things tangible on like all my through my house, like the refrigerator, <laughs> on the mirrors. Like you had to do what? 
like take up like oh. reminders, like oh, any yeah. negative thought. I mean, I had yeah. to do that because it was getting. Is that normal to get bombarded when you're actually going through deliverance and stuff at times? Yeah, I, that wasn't normal. It was like it was overwhelming to me, and I had to like stop it. Perfectly normal. Now, what happened was uh, her demons, some of them, had gone dormant. And they'd been in there for years. She didn't even know they were there. And uh, they, demons do that as insurance policies. In the event that you get saved, go through deliverance, get filled with whatever you're doing, they've always got a backup to destroy you. They're hiding. And they don't manifest. And the person never knows they're there. But her demons now have, are having to come out of their cave because she's going this way. And they're going, oh no. And now they're being exposed. And what are the symptoms of that? She just told us. Perfect. I was being bombarded by thoughts. Did you hear what she just said? That was them. What were they trying to do? Stop her from coming there. Now the ones that are hidden are now coming out. When a person has that happen, if they can realize that they have still have spirits they didn't know about and attack them and get them out, they'll move on massive. That's how the Holy Ghost tricks them. He fools them. It looked like I was a crazy person. Like people come over, they're like, "What are all these papers? Like, what's all this?" I'm like, I have to remind myself, I'm getting going for deliverance, and it's just it attacks me. Like at 3 a.m., I wake up, wake up in the morning, like just bombarded. Just oh. did you hear what she said? And, yeah. and I had to quickly because I tried it on my own, like, but I had to see something tangible. To like really grasp the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. more than scripture. So I needed reminders everywhere. Good. Now that system she set up was out of her own free will, using her own IQ to try to battle a problem and fix a problem. That's a patchwork problem that won't cure it. So all she's doing is patching the hole, not fixing it. See. Would be getting them out. But in that moment, she would go into work. She was patching. With her, with scriptures. Um, Pat patching. The demons to leave. Like, no, she didn't tell them to leave. No, but I'm saying she, the fix would be. That's why I guess my question is, what would the fix? Be? The fix would be getting them out. Self-deliverance. Self-deliverance or some. <laughs> right. Getting them out. I have. That's the only fix. There's no other fix. I saw and more. I saw more. And here, like last night. Any kind of deliverance, whatever deliverance you're using, get them out. Because if you don't get them out, you'll never be well. Yeah. But I'm real skeptical. Who puts their hands on me? I, just, I mean, otherwise I would say Houston. I can't find it. But you know what I'm saying? Well, you got hands. Y'all, you, um, you will say, you know, I'm very, very careful because I don't want to reinfect myself as I'm trying. To. No, your hands look great. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a nice anointing. You've got a good heart. I mean, you're you're ready to go, hon. You're on the road to being a killer, <laughs> isn't she? I mean, she's. I feel 100% positive about that person. Yeah, but the patchwork thing is just that patching. Demon, blah 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 blah. For God so loved the world. Okay, and that's a patch routine. But that's not a fix. No, I said this yeah. specifically what you told me in teaching is if oh. negative thought comes to you, it is not by God. That is not how he disciplines us, period. That's right. So she's using identification patch. That is not me. That's a demon. Now, that's a patch. She identified it. Now, what's the cure? Get it out. Uh, getting it out. Getting it out. Getting out. Mark chapter 1, guy screaming in the synagogue, I charge you, come out of the man. See that? No patching there. Healing there. It's 
spirit of infirmity, Luke 16, he laid his hands on her. Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Ow. Patching is good temporarily, but out is the only cure. SMI, schizophrenia. Repent, repent, repent. Good. Patching. Out. Heal. Dave Baldwin. Out. Healing. It can be overwhelming if you're not renewing your mind constantly. You know, after my I've been doing this for since I got delivered almost two years ago. So I'm constantly like I don't listen to anything like protecting my eyes and my ears. I do will not. My daughter's not even allowed to even watch a scary movie. I don't care if it's not like any kind of scariness or anything. I just my music. I I really don't listen to music. I listen to you all day. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. All right, we're at critical mass here. Uh, she's she's doing a great job patching and maintaining things, but now we need her to ramp it up and get the rest of them out. We don't want to go another two years with maintenance and patching. Okay. 99% of people that come here won't even do what she's doing. She's ahead of almost everyone we have here. She is doing great. But we've got to get that last step. O-U-T. And why not today? You know? yeah. well, that's what the Holy Ghost says on, all the time, doesn't he? Today, <laughs> if you will hear his voice. <laughs> Now is the accepted time. That's his attitude. He's always ready to go. So I try to go with that. Any more questions? These have been good ones. I'm going to close down here. Oh, okay. I'm going home next month. Where's that at? On the reservation. We're going home. Oh, where's that? Which reservation? Um, the Navajo Reservation. Navajo, okay. Yes. You're going home and what? Bad news? No. Oh. <laughs> I have family coming together. For oh. A family revival. Oh. So if I'm going to pray for a family, you sit no way in hand. Just sit next to them and pray with them, right? Well, I'm not sure, but did you say revival? Family revival? Yes. You're talking about church. Church thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you guys lead the revival? You have more training than anybody there. You know how many times don't you? I say I'm crazy and they won't even let me be up there. <laughs> I kind of do, but I don't want to say. Uh, why don't you take the lead there? And, and once, once one person gets healed, bang! That witness carries right into the whole rack, and then suddenly everybody looks over there. Well, you know. That's what I've been praying for lately a lot. And I've been, I have a cousin that my back slid, didn't know he was not together with his wife. But in my heart, I've been praying for him. And I didn't have his number, my daughter's number. And I asked him, like, hey, you know, are you going to come back for the family reunion, for the, you know, revival? And he said, oh, maybe, you know. But I had him in my heart. But finally, I got his number to call him to see if he was going to come home. Well, sounds like a sign to me that you're to go ahead and take the lead of the family revival. On the other hand, everybody thinks I'm still on drugs and everything, so we're kind of... <laughs> Listen, the devil will say everything and anything about you. Stop listening to him. That's right. That's and s go with the Holy Ghost. Go with the Holy Ghost. If they're saying a bunch of bad things about you, that means that's a good sign. <laughs> the demons are afraid of you if they're running you down. The guy was yelling at me in the hall last night. Did you hear him? I took it as a compliment. <laughs> You're going to hell and I'm going to be there when it happens. I mean, I almost asked him if he wanted me to sign an autograph of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> So that really does happen because... What really happens? What you're just talking about, like that man yelling at you. That really happened? Yeah. Um, because that mm -hmm. happens to me all the time. Why does it happen? Did you do something to generate it? 
I just walk in a room and people. You didn't say or do anything? Yeah, oh, that's a good sign then. The, the devil is attacking you. He sees you as a, either a threat or a potential threat. So he's going to lay it on you to try and get you to take offenses and take in wounds and get hurt. But you're not doing that anymore. Correct? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> trying to say that's a setup there that they're just attacking her they're doing it don't you have to really have the rest because like when you're getting especially by family members or something they're coming against you you're crazy I got all that stuff but again I am 11 years an ex-alcoholic so I did AA for a long time before I did deliverance and like turn my life over to Christ um and you have to really have rest. And to, for me, I'm just sharing this, um, that God knows the truth and you know the truth. And then just be at peace at that. Because otherwise you're going to be combative all day long. Your family members, strangers, all kinds of stuff. You're going to be constantly, it's going to drive you nuts. If God knows the truth, then I, my daughter used to accuse me on meth of screw, sleeping around with her boyfriends and really believed it. You know? And y'all, when we're talking and all that, I was like, hey, I would be so engrossed in trying to prove my, the truth. Here's the number to, here's a password to my, to, you know, uh, cell phone provider, you know, check to see the itemized calls. I'm not talking to him, and it would drive me nuts had I known that it just to let go, you know, and not waste all my energy, because it takes a lot out of you if you're constantly coming against that. Rest alone, and 1,000%, like, my mom, my mom and she got everybody in my family believe in that same thing, and they would be attacking me, you know? I only kind of, I think I got, kind of got that, because two years ago, two days ago, in, in my sister's house, where, Everything was like going and going around. And I was sitting there at three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, and I'm like, why can't I sleep? Why is everything, why do I feel like I'm high? Why do I feel like I'm on? Because I mean, I used to shoot up. I, to, I did everything. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. And me and my sister, we don't really communicate. We always don't hit a lot. But, we, you know, we came to terms, we came to God. And I was like, who do I go to? And I remember somebody mentioning, you know, maybe I never change or make everything right. But I, was like, I sat there praying to God, which I've never done in my life until I fell asleep. Yeah. I did that a thousand I, million times. I asked God to reveal Patrick to my sister and her husband what's going on in their house because I felt something was so wrong. Talk about it. I could bring it up because it had to do with the family, the whole family. And I was like, I know this. What is this? This is not good. Because I come from that world. I have came from that world. And I was like, how am I gonna have my sister believe me? That I, I I know something is going on here. What is it? I'm not gonna search for it. I sat there and I asked God, like, please, Lord, I don't know what's going on. Help be in this house. Be in this house. Reveal all the secrets and all, everything that's hidden, the hidden agendas. Because she has teenagers in her house, two girls. And the next morning, I could not believe they left me because I was sitting there and I'm like, how do I tell, how do I say this? I'm like, Lord, I fell asleep. I was sorry. I was praying to you, but I fell asleep. What's going to happen? How do I bring this up? And the next minute, she goes, I got to go get eggs. And I'm like, I'm cooking and she's getting eggs. And I'm like, and I come to find the whole whatever was in her house that was destroying her kids, that was helping to destroy her kids, came out. And I could say today, the house is more calm than when I first walked in. But I can't. I thank God. I don't understand it and everything, but I could see. Yeah, you know, I just think God brought me my sister back together. I haven't talked to my sister in over seven years. 
All right, well, that's, uh, that's a great way to close <laughs> teaching session. Go to prayer now. All right, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, we got the, the two gals here that have been progressing very well, Lord. Very well. Doing a great job. Got them right here. Growing. And doing a wonderful job. But we need to finish this. This has to finish now. We need to finish this. They're going back home. They're going back home. And the devil's waiting for them. He's waiting for them to get home. You know the feeling. And when he, when he comes to meet him at home, he's going to be in for quite a surprise. Quite a surprise. There you go. Come on out of there right now. There we go. Come out of there right now. There it comes. Come on out. Let's go. Come on out. Come on out. Come on. You let go of her mind. Did you hear her? Come out of that brain right now. Stop tormenting her. She commands you. Go. Come on. Right. There he is. Come on. Right. There he is. You stinking meth monster. Come on. Get out of her now. Come on, buddy. Out. Out. Come out of that body right now. Out of there. Come out. There he is. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out there right now. Hurry up. Come out. Come out there. Come out there. Get out of her now. Get out of her, buddy. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get out of her brain. Come out of her brain. Quickly. Quickly, come out. Quickly, come out. Come out quickly. Satan, lose your hold over. Satan, lose your hold over. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. No. Come out there. There they come. They go. They go right now. They go. They go. They go. What else is in there? What else is in there? You've been thinking about it. What is it? Come out of her. Huh? Come out all that. Go. Come out of there. You rejection. Come on. There he is right there. He just jumped right there. There he is right there. There he is right there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now, quickly. Get out. Come out of there. Self rejection. Come out right now. Hold that. Hold that. Come out. Come out right now. Go. 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 Come out of there right now. Go. Come on, buddy. Come out quicker. Insecurity, come out. Fear. Get out of there. Come on, buddy. Go. 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 You let him go right now. You let him go quickly. You let him go quick. You let him go quickly. Quickly. 
Quickly. Quickly. Get out of the body. Come on, quicker. Get out of the Come on, kidneys. Get out of the body. Get out of the body. Come on, 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 there he comes. Yeah. There he comes. Go. There he comes. Go. Come out of there quickly. There he is. Quickly. Come there he comes. Quicker. 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 Come out, Satan. Come on, fear. Insecurity. You get out of that body right now. You let this woman of God go. You let the woman of God leave. You get out of that body right now. Get out, brain. Get out, brain. Tired of Satan. Get out, brain. You come out of that body right now. You hear me? Get out of the woman of God. Come out of her. Stop, you demon of meth. Go. Meth. Meth, you liar. Meth, you liar. Satan, lose your hold of her. Criticism, lose your hold of her. Stab her in the back. Betrayal. Go. No. Betrayal. Satan, come out. Come out. Go, you devil. Get out of there. Get out of body right now. Go. Come out of that body right now, quickly. Come on, save me quickly. Come out, you devil. Get out of her neck right now. Come out of there right now, quickly. Come out of that neck. Stop lying to her. Stop making up stories. Stop coming to her at night. Get out of her dreams. Go! Come out of them dreams. Come out of them dreams. Go! I said, go! Get out of there. Come out of right now. Come out of there, Satan. You lose this preacher. Lose this preacher. Lose him. Lose him. Let go of him. Let go of him. Let go of him. Let go of him. They have right Lost I command. Doubt and, doubt and unbelief I command. Go. Come out of the man of God. Come out of me. Get out of there. He commands you to go. He commands stop blocking his anointing. Stop blocking his ministry. Stop it. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Get out of this preacher. Get out of this preacher. You get out of this preacher. Go. Get out of this preacher. Go. Get out of there. Get out of this preacher. Go. Come up, you monster. Come out of his childhood. Come out right now. Go in the name of the Lord. Every demon from Joshua. Joshua, come out. Joshua, come out. Joshua. Come out. Every demon from his wife. Come out. Go, Satan. Get out of there. Go, go, hey, now. go, 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 Come out. You come out of there. Navajo, come out of body right now. Navajo. Every Navajo spirit out of there. Shamans, medicine man. Shama, go. Get out of her stomach. There he is. Shama. Sweat lodge. Come out of your sweat lodge. Come out, you sweat lodge. Navajo. Get out. Witch doctor. You witch doctor. Get out of that body. Come out of that body. 
Go, you witch doctor. Come out. Come out now. Get out of that body now. Go now. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Rejection, I command you, go. Self-rejection, childhood rejection, rejection from men, go. Rejection from men, go. Get out of there right now. Get out of there right now. Stop it. Come out right now. Release her authority over you, you filthy devil. She has authority over you. In seconds. In seconds. Now come out now. You come out right now and stop tormenting my mind with doubt and unbelief. Doubt, confusion, and unbelief. Get out of my head. Go. Come out right now. Joshua, come out. Joshua. There he is. Joshua, come out. Joshua, go. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Go. Go. Joshua. Come up. Joshua, come out. Soul time. Break. Break. Get out of his head. Come out of his head. Come out of his mind. Mind control. You mind control. Get out of there. Go in Jesus' holy name. Come out of body right now. Fear and rejection. Go. Come out of body right now. Get out of her. Shake out of her quickly. Come out of there, you witch. Witches. Come out, witches. Come out, you witch. Get out of there. Get out of there right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out of there. He's got mind control spirits oh, in his head. Right. You spirit of mind control? No. No. You, you spirit of mind control? I command you. Jesus mighty name. Okay, Jesus mighty name. You come out. Come out. Get out of here right now. Fear and rejection, come out. Childhood horror. Nightmares. Bad dreams. Go in the name of the Lord. Go. Go. Satan is your home. Satan. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come out of there, you snake. Every snake. Every snake, go. Every snake, go. I'm not going to be 